What's up guys, it's Ghoul97, and we're going to play some Mario Kart 64. But before we do so, I got to show you this tape I made. Yeah, I finished my tape, I finished my VHS tape. Today I finished my VHS tape that I made against Chris Yam. He goes by the name of Chris Pie Cream. But I call him Chris Yam because he's... He goes his because according to his Instagram, he his name is Christian Timothy Yambo. Yeah, for short, I call him Chris Yam because he's the Filipino Christian. So enough of the now that's all the way. Let's play some Mario Kart. And I'm gonna drink some Sun Drop while well I'm gonna drink some Sun Drop while playing this game. Yeah, this game is awesome. I played this game a lot when I was in elementary school. My grandfather bought it for me at a, at a, at a used game store, at a used game store in my area. Me and my brother used to play this game all the time. Yeah, I had this Nintendo 64 since I was three years old. My grandfather got it. Me, my cousin, and my brother used to play on this thing a lot when I was a, when, I, when we were kids. I remember you watching my cousin play Pokemon and and Star Wars games on this on this, as well as he played the game Cell Park. I also remember playing. I also remember playing like other games too, like Pokemon Stadium. I played the mini games a lot on Pokemon Stadium. Yeah, can you believe this game came out in 1996? Also, Super Mario 64. Yeah, this game console came out in America in 1996. That in July of 1996. That was the month I was born. I guess that's why I like this 90s stuff so much, because that's the decade I was born in. Yeah, another reason why I'm writing a book that takes place in a 90s inspired future. I'm not going to talk much about my book here because, because I don't want to spoil it for everybody. Yes, I'm an aspiring writer. I'm planning on writing books. Like mainly science fiction and fantasy novels. I mainly plan to write science fiction and fantasy. Biscuits. Oh, biscuits! Double biscuits. Triple biscuits. Ah, biscuits. I got third. I got third place. Oh.
Gotcha. This is awesome stuff. This is bringing, this is giving me through a nostalgia trip, man. Ugh. Excuse me, I just burped. <laughs> now, I heard the characters sound different in the Japanese version as Mario Kart 64. Like Luigi's voice sound a lot higher, higher pitched, and Wario's voice sounds a lot deeper in the Japanese version. Yeah, crazy, right? In case you don't, in case the best way I can explain it, like the voice, the voices, the voices of these characters. Ooh, banana delivery. The voices of these of these characters in Mario Kart 64, the Japanese version of Mario Kart 64, did make it on the Game Boy Advance version of Super Mario Kart Secret, Secret Circuit in America. That is, I remember having a Mario Kart game for the Game Boy Advance. I think it's called Super Circuit or Secret Circuit. No, it's called Super Circuit, and the characters sounded and. I later found out that the, the characters sounded similar in the, in the Game Boy Advance version of that game. Sounded really similar to the Japanese version of Hard Kart 64. I, you know, don't, you should look up YouTube videos about the differences between the Japanese version and American version of Mario Kart 64. They go in better detail than I could. Man, I'd love to go to Japan. Do you guys know that Nintendo 64 had a had a peripheral called the Nintendo 64 DD? DD stands for disk drive. It was it was made it was made to release in America before even alongside the Nintendo 64, but it caught several delays. It was, it was finally released in Japan in 1999, but the console failed. You know, the Nintendo 64 DD failed in Japan and it was eventually and eventually cancelled. The plans to make the to bring it to the United States cancelled. Bummer. <laughs> now that's a bummer, am I right? <laughs> I heard the Nintendo 64 disk drive had a little it it was revolutionary for the time because it could connect to the internet. Like, you can go on message boards, and you could, and it could go on message boards, and freaking, it had expansions to games, and even had its own games on there, and was able to hold more memory than the cartridge. Basically, the Nintendo 64 disk drive discs look like a floppy disk or a zip drive, look between a mix of a floppy disk and a zip drive. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, basically they are mag mag magnetic discs that were really popular in the 90s. Yeah, the Nintendo 64 disk drive has, in my opinion, is a criminally underrated, is a criminally underrated peripheral. It it deserved more attention than it, it deserved more praise and it, it it deserved more attention than it got. And that's just my opinion, my personal opinion, man. One of my favorite, one of my favorite Nintendo 64 DD games happened to be. The Mario Artist games. They are pretty cool. Yeah, the Mario Artist games are pretty cool. 
we can make paintings and we can make paintings and create your own custom characters and compete in talent sh to do in talent shows or or make small movies or make small clips that you can share with other with share friends. It could it even was able to it was e it was even able to take to take pictures of people's faces and put them on your characters. I heard through the Game Boy camera or through certain cameras that were popular in the 90s. It was pretty cool for the time. It's like the Miis before the Miis. Like, you know about the Nintendo Miis from the Wii, and then they came on the Wii U and now on the Switch. Well, basically Mario Artist characters, the Mario Artist avatars, were basically like the Miis before the Miis, but much more advanced. At least for the 90s. Advanced for the 90s and early 2000s. So I got some my got some hair in my eye. Sorry about that. Biscuits. Yeah, it's a lot of cool stuff, man. The Nintendo 64 DD had a lot of cool stuff to offer. It's just too bad it didn't get the attention it got. I don't know why I love that console so much. I love that peripheral so much. But there was a YouTuber named Metal Rock Jesus who found a who found a US version of the Nintendo 64 DD that was supposed to be released publicly, but never got the chance. Along with a mysterious blue disc. Which I think is pretty cool. If you don't know if you know if if you don't know anything about Metal Rock Jesus, I'd recommend you go check his channel out. I recommend you go check his channel out as soon as you can. Don't worry, I'll be here when you get back. Yeah, the US version of the Nintendo 64 DD being found by Metal Rock Jesus. Man, that's awesome. Metal Rock Jesus, if you're watching this, what's up, bro? Thank you for finding that criminally underrated system, the US version of that criminally underrated peripheral. If I ever do get into independent game developing, I might probably make some homebrew games for, for Nintendo 64, or maybe through the Nintendo 64 DD. I don't know. But I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. If I ever do get into independent game developing, I might probably make some make some meme games. I might probably make a game, a fan game of the Gang Gang. Make it like a parody of Doom. Just to start out. Ooh. This gets if you don't know what Doom is, Doom was basically a first-person shooter that was really popular in the early to mid, early night throughout the '90s. Okay, I'm about to do banana. I was gonna do a banana delivery. All right. Okay, here I'm gonna do this trick I call banana delivery. Banana delivery. No, it doesn't work when you're when you're using the star. I should be able to get to first place now. I almost had the first place. I wanted to get the first place, but whatever. Well, nothing I can do now. I need the gold. Well, it looks like Mario's gonna get the gold, as always. Oh, Luigi, you can never get a break, can you? Well, at least, well, actually, Luigi does have a lot of cool stuff. To be honest, I don't see anything wrong with Luigi's Mansion. I never played it, because I never had a Nintendo GameCube. 
If I ever do get a Nintendo GameCube, I would love to get a Game Boy Player so I can play my Game Boy games on TV. That'd be good for this YouTube channel. Or hopefully I'll be able to get a Super Nintendo with a Super Game Boy peripheral. Of course, I probably didn't get that for Christmas, so I'm not gonna get my hopes. I'm not gonna get my hopes up though. against NPCs. Red turtle shells. Take this, Mario. A little dabble, do ya? <laughs> yeah, my buddy Brony78 wants to wants to make more content for his wants to find good content to make for his YouTube channel. I'm willing to help him with that. So I like making content with Bony78 and Judy Demigod. I recommend subscribing to Bony78's channel. He's he has a great he has a great YouTube channel. I recommend you check him out.
Here we go. We're going doom. Gotcha. Ooh, banana delivery. Banana delivery. Wait a second. I could do this. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Sherbert Island. That was a close one. That penguin almost hit me, man. Gotcha. Okay, that penguin sent me back. That also sent me back. But I can I can recover from this. Here we go. Alright, second place, not bad. I got I got some good points, man. Okay, biscuits. Oh, biscuits. Berry biscuits. Holy biscuits. This is... Now I'm really last. Alright. I can get through this, man. Ah, biscuits!
All right. See how you guys like it. lightning does strike twice. Alright, I'm all the way back to first. I also remember, you know, the in the library my grandparent my grandparents lived. In the town my grandparents lived, there was a library that had my grandma used to go, well, yeah, my grandma used to go to the library, used to, and she got, she checked out Paper Mario on the Nintendo 64, so I played it. I used to play Paper Mario a lot, when I, I used to play Paper Mario a bit before I got back to the library, but now it's no longer there. And this was back in the early 2000s, so, so yeah, it made sense for the time because, because the Nintendo 64 was still up, when, and the game and the GameCube was still new back then. Back when I was in kindergarten, the Nintendo 64 was still going strong, and the GameCube was still new. Funny how the Virtual Boy, you know, was meant to bring virtual reality to homes back in 1995, but it flopped. But the Virtual Boy, but the Virtual Boy had a little, had a little bit of a fan base nowadays. And plus, now we have virtual, now we have virtual reality headsets. For a minute there, I thought that Virtual Boy might have killed the idea of, of virtual reality in the homes. But then the Oculus came out when I was in high school. Yeah, the, the Virtual Boy was pretty much a year before I was born. And the Tiger R Zone kind of ripped off, the, it was kind of a rip off of the Virtual Boy. At least the at least the virtual at least the R the Tiger R Zone had a had at least the Tiger R Zone was basically the LED the Tiger the Tiger game version of the it was basically the Tiger game it was basically the Tiger game equivalent to the Virtual Boy it had red and black graphics and but the only difference the only difference between the R Zone the Tiger R Zone and the Nintendo Virtual Boy. Is that the Tiger R Zone actually had a headband? Okay, then the only other difference is the ability you had the ability to like it, it had the innovation where you could play with one. It had the idea where you, you can where you can play with just one eye looking at the screen. Yeah, weird, isn't it? Yeah, both the Virtual Boy and the N Tiger R Zone came out in 1995. Both failed, of course. Both were massive failures. But they had a Tiger R Zone handheld version too. They had, I heard they had two or three versions of the Tiger R Zone. Pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty interesting, huh? The nineties is a crazy time. Man, I would love to visit I would love this I would love to have been in the nineties. Well I was born in the nineties, so I didn't experience much of the nineties. At least that I remember. But I did experience it in early two thousands, which was okay too, which is pretty good too. Because we had stuff like the PS2 and the and the original Xbox and the GameCube, Sega Dreamcast. I had this. I had the PS2. I got the PS2 when I was 
I had the PS2 given to me for my 7th birthday, and I still have my PS2 to this day. Yeah, I still have a PS2, I still have my PS2 to this day. And I still play it today, too. Yeah, I still play my PS2. Pretty sweet, right? I had, I had the Nintendo 64. It was the first game console I ever played on at my grandparents' place. And that Nintendo 64 I'm playing right now, that was the one my grandparents gave me. And I still play it today. And I, and I got the PS2 when I was like 7, and I still have it today. I still play it today. Alright, I'm on first place. And before I end this video, I'm going to show you a Christmas gift my mom gave me for Christmas. Yeah, she got this How to Draw Anime, the Master Guide of Drawing to Drawing Anime. Pretty sweet, right? How cool is that? Well, hope you guys like this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Bye. And be sure to follow me on my Gab and my Truth Social. Bye.